Hello, I thought I would show you my uh, homemade pot stand uh, for camping. Um, but first of all, I thought I would show you a tool that's really good for making things out of sheet metal. Um, you can use it on steel, I've often used it on tins and that sort of thing. So like a tin lid or having drilled a hole in the side of a tin you can cut round inside tins. Um, I also use this stuff which is uh, sheet aluminium, probably ooh, a millimetre maybe, something like that. Um, the problem often with using tin snips on metal is that as you cut, it's tin slips of course just like big strong scissors and as they cut through a piece of metal they bend one side up and the other side down. So um, the other thing that I've inherited from my father is now this says Eclipse 2000 I'm pretty sure yes on there it's Goss Cut it says G-O-S-C-U-T the Goss Cut Eclipse 2000 made in England I don't know if anybody would ever get one again you can take this blade out, which is the finest blade of three that came with the set. And you can put in a, a very thick one, or that's the medium sized one. They have a serrated edge along there as well. And um, I can demonstrate how that works. But this has been really useful for making stoves and pot stands for my camping gear. Uh, if I can put it back together again, I'll demonstrate it anyway. There we go, that's back in and located. So this is the finest one. So as I say, it's basically just got, instead of a scissor movement, it's got this which supports the plate, and then this bit on the handle just uh, grabs the metal, as I say, a serrated edge under there, which means it sort of doesn't just slip out that way too easily. You have to put a bit of pressure on as well anyway, but then what it does is it just, I'm trying to cut myself on this, just cuts through metal and as you see, it doesn't, it cuts a section out of course, you have to allow for that in your measurements, but it uh, just curls up a little bit out of the middle like so i can actually focus on it and show you it so you always get these little scrap bits that are curled up on the inside i haven't done that uh, too well to be able to show you i'll do another one that way and then it'll be easier to demonstrate there we are so that's the little bit that's that it cuts out and the rest of it you see isn't deformed it just cuts straight through there's a little sharp edge on the bottom of whichever side but that's not a problem so that's the tool moving swiftly on this was my um mark one of this design i've had all sorts of different uh stoves that I've made over the years and this is a pot stand this is a pot stand basically to go over a um, an alcohol burner I use basically something like oh it's not there I use these little tins anyway uh, I've stuffed them with rock wool and put some mesh over the top it's not handy at the moment I've also made them out of uh, out of little tins little uh, pop cans uh, so they sit in the bottom of course and then this folds up into three pieces and it slots together in the way you will have seen many times before I'm sure if I remember which way around to go do it uh, that goes on there and then that one which as you notice that has two legs on it this has one leg on it so we've now got the three legs of the tripod that we need uh, and that one just slots in the top like so with a bit of luck and um, 
Bob's your uncle. That works quite well. Just like that. However, and actually one of the interesting things about that is I realised that what a lot of people do is they'll have sections like this, rectangles or whatever, and they'll put the cut in the bottom of one and the cut in the top of the other one. So they all, and they, they make them all the same, all three the same. And then the problem is your last one, you're trying to bend because it won't go into the last one. So that's why I've ended up with this method with um, all the legs supported without that last section, uh, which is the last section. It is that section, isn't it? No, it's not. It's that section, that, that last section just slotting in there. Um, and it's still sturdy. It's still, um, in fact, it's more sturdy because if you have... Uh, the other way of doing this shape anyway would be to have a leg on each piece. Idiot, that's it. Would be to have a leg on each piece. And then everything tends to be kind of falling down at one end and each one can kind of flop. Whereas this is absolutely sturdy. There's nothing that's going to rock on there at all. The reason why I say this is Mark 1 and I'm going to make another one. You can see where I've had to scrub scrub off all that paint which is some sort of i don't know plastic stuff i think they put on it first on that this this is made out of that and then i've just given it a little bit of a bend which is really just so it fits my the pot that i use which is actually a a bottle it's a, a or a, uh, an aluminium bottle now, you have to be careful using an aluminium bottle. That fits in there rather nicely as well, if it, as long as it's the right way up. You have to be careful with aluminium bottles. Don't just use any aluminium bottle for drinks or for water or anything because they're lined on the inside with plastic and that's uh, not great to be using time after time, boiling it up. It can melt the plastic or it's giving you, you know, poisons from the plastic i know a lot of people say don't use aluminium pans uh, because you're getting aluminium in your system but actually there's i've looked into it anyway and there's an awful lot more aluminium that we just get from the general environment and from our food so anyway but that one i particularly sourced uh one of these bottles that has no lining so it's just aluminium on the inside as well as the outside Anyway, I'm going to make another one of these that is longer. Uh, it, has, it stands higher, so it'll have longer legs. And instead of the legs sloping out like this, I'll have it straight on the outside. And I'll probably not have so much metal on here with holes in. I'll probably actually just have it as a almost like a, a lintel shape, almost like just a... Um, and what shape's that? You know what I mean? Uh, two legs and a cross. Um, the same system, two legs on one piece, another of the legs on the third, on the second piece, and the third piece will just be a bar that slots in the top to complete it. The little, mm, the little <laughs> cut out in the top there, of course, fits nicely on uh, the bottle, so that that, instead of just kind of, if you have just something straight like that it's easy to kind of put it too far one way and it and it slip off um whereas with a, a recess in there it works quite well and not only that but if you put instead of my bottle if i was to put uh, something larger a pan the pan stands on there and these then provide air holes with the bottle on the little corner bits provide an air hole and the reason I'm going to do it straighter is because I often find it's good to have a a windbreak that is kind of sprung. I have one I'm just making here from a an old um, food tray. I'm going to cut, I think, cut that straight across that way and that way. And it's often good to kind of close those up round the stove. But um, what tends to happen is 
if you put it down like that around your stove, it tends to slide up the stove and then fall over. Whereas if it's got straight sides, it won't slide up. It will just sit round so I can just form, form the aluminium round it. I also found that that distance above my stove to the, to the pot, to the pan, isn't really quite enough. And um, when I was cooking on it, it wasn't even enough with the pan on as well. When I had a pan on, it was kind of burning, you know, flames quite high until I put the pan on and then it would it would kind of go down to almost a perfect simmer. So I'm going to have some sort of adjustment as well. So I can lift the, the burner up inside so that it will uh, simmer on, and I've got different... I've got different uh, tops for my burner as well, so I can put a smaller ring on the burner. So that's it, and uh, thank you for watching. I hope that's been of some interest. As I say, I don't know whether you can still get these. Um, another way to do things like that would be with a sort of jigsaw, I suppose, or indeed there'll be all sorts of... Uh, um, machine working things but I haven't really got anything technical like that I just use one of these which I haven't searched for recently but I imagine this must be I don't know it might actually be 60s technology it certainly it certainly must be 70s at, at, at the latest I would think and I can remember my dad making all sorts of things with this okay bye for now